Hello, welcome to another Fusion 360 tutorial. Today we're going to be making an impossible dovetail box. First I want to thank whoever has subscribed to my channel. I'm not really sure why you would at this point, but thank you anyway. Okay, now we're in Fusion 360. First thing you want to do is create a new component by going under Create, clicking New Component. Name it whatever you want, I'm just going to name mine dovetail. First we want to create the like the, the box that our dovetail is going to be in. So we're going to click create sketch. We're going to put it on whichever plane we want, but for me I always click this bottom plane right here. First we want to create a rectangle. So go to sketch, rectangle, center rectangle, and click the origin point the point where this red and this green line crisscross. Click it, drag out your rectangle, then click again. Right now this is a rectangle, so you know two sides can be different from the other two sides. But I want to make a square, so I want to make them all the same length. To do this, go to under your sketch palette, go to equal, the equal constraint not to be confused with the parallel constraint. They look very similar and I get them confused all the time. But the equal, where the lines are completely horizontal. And click one of the, either the top or the bottom, and then one of the sides. Now all four sides are always going to be equal to each other. I want this box to be 100 millimeters square. So I'm gonna hit D for dimension on my keyboard. And then hit, click one of the sides and enter 100 millimeters. You see all my lines have turned black now. That means they are fully defined. A fully defined sketch object uh, has knows where it is, uh, knows how big it needs to be, and knows where it knows where it is in relationship to a fixed point. And that fixed point for us is the origin. I can make an entire video on what constitutes fully defined and maybe I will but not in this one. Anyway, enough of that. Stop the sketch, rotate it around and we're going to extrude this out so hit E for extrude. Click the profile we just made. Where it says direction I'm going to do symmetric and where it says measurement I'm going to do whole length and then distance, I'm going to be entering 50 millimeters and hit enter. Under inspect this uh, tool right here, or you can just hit I on the keyboard, but just going to hit one of the corners and make sure that yes, it is 50 millimeters tall. And just hit close. Now we're going to start drawing our dovetail go to create sketch and click one of our sides this one's fine I'm going to take the line tool I'm going to hit L on my keyboard and I'm just going to start doing a rough sketch of my dovetail I'm going to begin on the left side and end on the right so here we go alright I want both these bottom lines to be completely horizontal. This one already is by chance, but this one is not. It can be moved around. To make it horizontal, I'm going to click the horizontal vertical constraint on my sketch palette and click the line once. Now I can drag it around and do whatnot to it, and it's always going to be horizontal. I want these two bottom ones to line up. Going to use another constraint for that, the collinear constraint. Click the collinear tool, and click the two lines. Get out of the collinear tool by hitting select. And now these lines are always in line with each other no matter what I do. I want this top line to be centered above this point, the origin point. So to do that, there's a couple ways. The easiest way for me is go to sketch, point, 
bring the t your cursor along this line until you see this little blue uh, triangle. That means that wherever your cursor snapped to, snapped to the center of this line. See, I can put it somewhere on this line, and there's no triangle, but if I bring it to the middle, there's the triangle. And you see, it, uh, the triangle has persisted, but now it's a sketch constraint. So this point is exactly in the center of this top line. A lot of words for something pretty simple. <laughs> now I want this point, i.e. the center, to line up vertically with this origin. To do this, we're going to do horizontal vertical constraint again, and click the two points. It's moved it upwards, as you can see, but I can bring it back down, and it is perfectly lined up in the center with the origin point. Next, essentially what I'm trying to do with all these constraints is to get this kind of kind of like this where it's perfectly ser uh, centered in the sketch I mean in the box sorry uh, and both sides are equal I want these two bottom lines to be uh, equal in length so I'm gonna use the equal constraint and click them and I want these two uh, diagonal lines to also be equal I'm gonna apply the same constraint uh, actually, those ones don't need it actually. They're already equal based off the other constraints. That's a topic for another video as well. Anyway, so yeah, I'm manipulating this these lines, but as you can see, uh, from one side of this green line to the other, they're the same. Now I can start dimensioning. D for dimension. I want this angle right here to be 60. And I want the top of the dovetail to be how about 40. And the height of the dovetail to be 12. 12 looks good. And I want the top of this dovetail to be eight millimeters from the center. Actually, no, let's take that down to five. All right, as you can see, once again, our lines all change from blue to black. They're all fully defined. Now, we can stop sketch. We're not gonna extrude or do anything with the sketch right now. Just kind of leave it be. Go to construct up here at the top and click plane at angle. What you want to do now is click one of the corners of the box where your sketch ends. I'm going to do this uh, corner. Click it once. Now I'm going to go, I'm going to look down from the top and I'm going to rotate this plane that I just created. I'm going to rotate it 45 degrees. I'm going to use this little handle here. It should snap to 45 or you can just enter it manually. Once it's uh, where we want it, click OK. I'm just going to step back, take a look at it. We have this sketch here on one of the sides of our box. And we have this plane that is at, a, at an angle. And it's kind of just touching that corner, as you can see. Just touching that corner. Now what we want to do is we want to make a new, yet another sketch and we're going to make it on the plane we just created. In fact, we can turn off the rec uh, the box right now. We don't need to see it. We just need to see our previous sketch. Actually, yeah, we need to turn it on. Take the project tool, which is P on your keyboard, and we want to click all of the lines of the dovetail sketch we just made. Just click them once. One, oops. Two, three, four, five. We don't need all these lines. We also want to project the corner 
of the box. So get the project tool back out and click it once and hit OK. Now we can turn off the body. And we can turn off our previous sketch. So all we have is this. If your sketch, if you're if you're kind of rotating around like me and it kind of gets wonky and you kind of can't get it to look flat down on the sketch again perfectly, just find the sketch over here in your uh, tree, right click it and click look at. There we go. This vertical line right here that represents the corner, click it once and hit X to turn it to a construction line. And now we're going to make a copy of this dovetail right here and make a copy of it on the opposite side of this vertical line. We're going to mirror it. So take your cursor, drag a box from right to left, and select all this junk. Go to Sketch, Mirror. Um, object should already be highlighted. So click Mirror Line where it says Select. Just click it, and then click the vertical line. You see a preview right here, what's, what it's going to make. Hit OK. And there we go, we have just an exact copy of all this junk right here on the other side of this vertical line. Now we finish with this sketch, and we can hit stop sketch. Now's the time to actually make the dovetail. Turn your box back on. Um, go to modify, split body. Under body to split, we're going to, you guess it, uh, select our box. It's the only body we have. And for splitting tool, we're going to hit where it says select. And we're going to uh, carefully select every line in this sketch we just made. Starting over here, we're going to hit this one. As such, just clicking every single one. Where it says ex extend splitting tool, you can have it checked or unchecked, at least for this example. Um, and everything looks good, so click OK. And there we have it. We have our impossible dovetail. It took our box and used our sketch kind of like a blade and cut it into two halves. So we have a bottom half and our top half. We can turn off the top half and kind of see what's going on underneath. If you didn't know prior to this video how a impossible dovetail worked, well now you do. I'm going to hit A for appearance just to make the top half look different. When you first open it, it should look like this. So go under metal. Uh, and I'm just going to toss some make the top half brass. You can make it whatever appearance you want. I just chose brass. And there we go. Essentially this is done. Uh, you could take this and using the tools in Fusion either 3D print or machine this. However, I recommend machining this because 3D printers, it's kinda known already that 3D printers can do kinda complex geometry. So if you see something like this 3D printed, you'll just be like, oh, they just did something wacky with their software or use the dual extruder, etc. But if you did it out of wood or metal, people will probably scratch their heads more and be like, how did how do they do that? I'm gonna take this a step further and just kind of make a kind of animate this in a way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here to our tree and I'm gonna find our bodies. And I'm going to right click each one and click create components from body. Uh, I'm going to rename them just to make it easier to distinguish them. To rename a component you just double click it. Or triple click I think. I think it's triple click. Yeah it's triple click the component real quick. Okay. And you can just type in the name. This one's at the bottom. And this one's the top. Where it has under assembly, or symbol rather, go down and hit as built joint. We're going to click the top, then we're going to click the bottom. 
on a position, by default it should be select rigid. Uh, I've practiced this tutorial a few times already, so that's why all my settings are a little different than what you might see. But this is how it should look. It should select rigid by default. But I'm going to hit slider instead. Where it says position, I'm going to temporarily make the top invisible. And I'm going to select one of these lines, one of these uh, ones that go diagonal. Doesn't matter which. And in the center of them, you'll see a little white arrow. I'm going to click that, turn my top back on. And now we're going to animate the joint just to see what's going to do. As you can see, it's going to make it so I can slide the top along the bottom, or vice versa. Looks good, so I'm going to hit OK. And the bottom, uh, now I'm going to ground it so it can't move. Because right now, I, the slider doesn't really work because they're both free to move. One of them needs to be held in place. So I'm going to go to the bottom over here, right click it and hit ground. You'll see a little thumbtack symbol come up next to it. Now I can slide the top along the bottom and kind of just, you kind of see just a little uh, animation or just a more animated way of viewing the impossible joint. So I hope this tutorial helped you, hope you learned something. At the end of all my videos, I always say, if you have a request for a tutorial, please leave it in the comments. I am serious about that. Uh, if you have any sort of like thing you're having trouble with, or you want to know how to create some sort of object, please leave it below. If I have somebody asking me for a tutorial, I probably won't wait four months between doing them. So anyway, I'm just saying, if you have an idea, please leave it below. Anyway, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you next time.